You are not far from the kingdom of God. Modern life gives us access to lives and communities we might once have known only through the memoirs of trepid and travelers. Now, just switch on the television or the internet and anything, anyone or anywhere is laid out before us. It's a pity if we treat remote indigenous societies superficially and unthinkingly as passing examples of how other peoples live because they often teach and challenge us. And this is particularly true when we are introduced to groups of people whose lives might appear exotic and less complicated than ours. What we might miss is how coherent and caring they are. They cultivate a symbiotic relationship with the nature that surrounds them. Their hierarchies exclude nobody from their care and concern unless someone commits infractions which breach the unwritten laws and practices of the community. Everyone has a role to play in the life of the group, and this is how they survive. Strangers in their midst receive particular care because people recognize that they will be vulnerable in a world that can be dangerous. Perhaps these patterns of mutual support are easier to maintain in small communities, but their success challenges our assumptions that our more sophisticated approach to living is thereby more civilized. One suspects the opposite is often true. As Jesus comes to the end of his public career, he sums up his teaching by having final exchanges with his old adversaries, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees. In St. Matthew's Gospel, this discussion takes place with a Pharisee. Here it is with a scribe. His message is the same. When you examine the law, the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, the instructions that stand out are these two great commandments, the love of God and the love of neighbor. Jesus has attempted to illustrate through his life and teaching how these two commandments may be lived out in practice. His criticism, his criticism of his adversaries is that they, they say one thing and they do another. They don't necessarily carry out these commands themselves, but they load up their listeners with a variety of rules that bear little relationship to these more fundamental principles of life. His critics are judgmental rather than compassionate, imposing burdens, burdens rather than healing or heartening. Jesus offers a life of service which lifts burdens, restores and nourishes in both word and deed. To see and to practice this is to be close to the kingdom of God. That is to be a channel of God's loving presence in the world. Sometimes people feel uncertain about how to love themselves, but Jesus' life reveals the intimate link between the love of self 
and of our neighbor. We shouldn't exploit our neighbor, nor should we mistreat ourselves. Our concern and respect for our neighbor help give a true form to the concern and respect we have for ourselves. In the synod held last year in Rome, the concluding synthesis document concentrated less on the subjects that had been discussed and more on how they had been considered by what they termed the synodal path. What has been important was the careful listening and exchange of views between lay, religious, clerical, and Episcopal voices. Theologically, this approach was founded upon the Trinitarian nature of God and the lived experience of these two great commandments. The Synod document reflected on the individual concerns that had been raised, but did so not, not as commands, not as edicts, but as matters of further reflection hoping that the synodal process might be adopted by individual Episcopal conferences and dioceses, parochial and other groups, and might become the way that we tackle all issues in our Christian lives. It's a bold challenge, but it's rooted in the great commandments. If we cannot practice them in the way that we discuss, codify, and guide our faith, then how can we be sure that we have remained on the right track? The trickling down of this approach to the local level will take time, and the pace will differ across countries and local communities. Some may find the synodal approach threatening, and others will be impatient to move on faster and get to a black and white solution. The synodal process aims to find ways in which all the diverse groups feel respected, heard, and freed in their faith to practice more fully these two great commandments. May God bless you and give you his peace this day.